the last time I saw Olympia, plays with a really interesting idea in art where when you ask someone if they've seen an exhibition in the day of, of, of digital media, they say yes. And I saw it, but not in the flesh. And this is the first time that I'm seeing it in the flesh. Uh, and it had a really profound emotional impact on me because for me, this work began a conversation about human dignity, right? I think this is really a kind of exploration of human dignity, a conversation about it. What was powerful about this work was the emotional impact comes from Laurie, the character in the background, that is now coming to the foreground. In the sense that she, for me, is, is my grandmother. My grandmother worked as a maid for my entire life. And there is this idea that when you are in the kind of service role, that you fall to the foreground. And I think history and time have a very beautiful relationship where history and time, in fact, changes the relationship to power that one has in the narrative. And you can start to see her character becoming more revealed, especially in the moment in time that we're living in. And I think this is a fantastic way to talk about visibility and invisibility in relationship to this work. And I think um, Edward was uh, leaps and bounds ahead of his time to be able to deal with such intense material uh, back in 1863. One of the fascinating things about when I first saw this work is it reminded me of some of the things that I was exposed to already. I was thinking of Kerry James Marshall. I was thinking a lot of uh, an artist from the Bahamas named Stan Burnside. And so it evoked a kind of relationship between uh, the subject and the object. It made me think of the kind of everyday experience uh, of the subjects in the painting. And as I'm seeing it in person, the kind of the intensity of the work the rebelliousness of the work is more present for me in ways in which I hadn't seen it before. For example, there's a sense that these combination of elements, the black cat, the woman of African um, Caribbean descent, and uh, the kind of professional working woman all sharing the same space is a fantastic tribute um, to the idea of thinking about hierarchy and thinking about place in a given society and how radical it was to, to think of doing this at the time. It makes me think of uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers, or it makes me think of the rapper Tupac Shakur, uh, because at the time, this material was very much rejected, and you felt that rejection, um, and I felt, that, I felt that rejection even from the Bahamas. I think one of the things that artists share across media is there's a certain level of rebelliousness that happens when you're pushing ideas around and you're disrupting the status quo. And it's funny that this becomes one of the most uh, important paintings in the history of art, because at the time that it was painted, like a lot of the artists that I enjoy today, a lot of the musicians that I enjoy today, uh, the music was, was, was more or less rejected at the time that it was being produced. And I think we should be conscious of that as, as consumers and producers of culture, uh, and, and think through the idea that the, the sound that we're hearing Although it might, be, it might be produced out of a, a place of disruption, it encapsulates in these kinds of profound ways the moments that we're currently living in. And so for this work, for me, it, it has this kind of symphonic quality to it. It makes me think of someone like Nina Simone, for example, because again, she's talking about my grandmother. And who would have thought that in this moment in time, I would show up at this museum in Paris and then have this kind of profound relationship with this character that I think is related to my personal grandmother that I have profound respect for um, and is presented in a way that has a relationship to again this conversation about dignity of these characters in the painting. For me painting and art making in general has always been about representation. It's always been about a conversation between visibility and invisibility and for the most part someone who does the kind of work that my grandmother does, uh, the work of a maid, is more or less invisible from any kind of cultural narrative. So to see someone like my grandmother represented at the forefront uh, of culture, at the forefront of a cultural conversation, is profound. And I think that the brilliance of this work is having this kind of vision to understand these dynamics and to create a kind of conversation of discomfort at the moment that the painting was made to think about inclusion. And so this work for me becomes about, uh, that has, a, has a kind of vibe of inclusion, which is a profound thing to think about, but it's something that artists think about all the time.
And I think that's kind of the, the vantage point by which I enjoy this work. One of the things that is really uh, profound about this painting is like with mo most works of art made hundreds of years ago, there's a sense that time has an effect on how we understand it. Time has a way of changing the way we interpret it. Because as this painting is being, as this painting was produced, the world has changed in so many profound ways. When you look at this work, it's difficult not to think about the ways in which time has changed our relationship to this work in the sense that we have a different relationship to what it means to be dignified. We have a different relationship to what it means to be of color. We have a different relationship to the roles in which these characters play in a painting. And all of these things underline the value of this kind of avant-garde thinking to how artists end up shaping the world through their process and practice. And I think this is one of, seeing it in person, seeing this work up, in, up close and personal really changes my relationship to it because it has a kind of physical, visceral kind of effect on me because when you walk up to the picture, you cannot deny the characters in the picture. You may be able to pass by these characters by looking at it in a kind of photographic representation, but when you're looking at this work in person, the characters are right there in front of you. For me, one of the things that this work inspires is it gives me a, a certain level of confidence about some of the ideas that artists have that are not necessarily acceptable at the moment that the art is being produced in. And I think there's a certain clear relationship to a kind of rebellion in this work that I think is essential to any kind of creative practice. And for any young person thinking about a career in the arts, I think the idea that you're gonna, what you're doing might be accepted from the onset is, is kind of a misnomer. In fact, the sense that when you're doing something that is unaccepted, uh, I think makes, puts you in a space where you are having a conversation with uh, art, artists such as this one.